this is part this is part two of a video that was designed to help people get comfortable with calculating pHs, pOHs, and how to do hydrogen ion concentrations and so on. Right up at the top of this little sheet, which was a handout that I gave today for my students to practice on, we have right here at the top a uh, what I've circled in pen is giving you the ranges for acidity and basicity and neutral or the basic pH range the basic pH range here and the acidic pH range here and neutral so 0 to 7 acidic 7 to 14 basic now here is an example of how to do the problems that you're being asked to do on the front of this sheet so let's go ahead and just concentrate on what they gave as an example. So if you look here, you will be able to see that if I'm giving, for instance, the pH and it's 5, all we have to do to do what's normally called an anti-log to get it back into the hydrogen ion concentration I have to change the sign and make it an exponent of 10. So my exponent of 10 is minus 5. And that becomes the hydrogen ion concentration. As you can see up here, the pH is the minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration. And the, the log is simply the exponent, whatever it is, of 10. And that becomes a whole number. So here again, you see exactly the same thing. The pOH was 9. The hydroxide ion concentration was minus 9. The minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration, which you see done here, it's or the hydroxide ion concentration, you'll notice that it is just like the hydrogen ion concentration in terms of our calculation. So if that's our concentration, all we have to do is take the minus log, which means we take this number, change the sign, and it becomes the pOH. Now, all you have to do to answer this last column is look at the pH, and the pH below 7, 7 and be well, below 7, you can see is your acidic, and that's why this guy's acidic. Now, Let's go ahead and run the numbers. This is the way I recommend. If you know pH and pOH, hey, just subtract the 17 from, or I'm sorry, the 7 here, subtract that from 14. And that is, that is going to give you your correct pOH. Because pH plus pOH is equal to 14. And this is just like you saw in part one video. The hydroxide or the hydrogen ion concentration, let's make these in the same order. Okay, the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration is equal to 10 to the minus 14. And we've almost left the bone now. So this is a minus 14. Now, right here, we have taken the logarithms of these guys, concentrations. And that's how we got our pH, and that's how we got the pOH. Just for your interest, you don't need to know this to do the calculations, but logarithms are added, and that multiplies the original concentration. And you can see when we add up the pH and pOH, we get the negative 10 over here if we do the anti-log. And if we do the minus log of this, we wind up with this. So whether you're anti-logging or logging, you always change the sign for the answer. So now, look, here we go. We're going to take this guy. And we're going to use this as the negative exponent because we're going to change the sign of 10 
and that becomes the molarity, which is the hydrogen ion concentration. And this guy, exactly the same, because we are at neutral, so the pH and pOH are the same. And then we just keep going. If we don't know the pH or the pOH, just anti-log this guy, which means we take this minus 4, change the sign, and it becomes the pOH. It's just that simple. And now if we want to get the pH over here, what we need to do is simply subtract, using this formula, 14 minus 4 is 10 anti-log this, and we get 10 to the minus 10. And this was 10 to the minus 4. So with a pH of 10, we know we're on the basic side. Because pH of 10 has us in the basic range. And that's really all there is. It just is more of the same for all the rest. Let's go to the back side now. And this is where you're more, most likely to have the trouble, and our, our challenges, that is. And then we're also going to need that little pH chart that I directed you to in the first video. And that guy looks like this. Okay? If you want to copy this down or simply go to my website and do a site search, you will be able to see exactly what you have here. So... That this will also give you the opportunity to take the hot links that are on that page when you look at it online, and those hot links will take you to a couple other videos that show you the same thing I'm showing you, only I think this presentation is maybe a little bit better. So let's, let's go ahead and look at this. The, the key to this, whenever they give you a concentration is, you need to make this into scientific notation. So if I make this into scientific notation, I have to move my decimal 1, 2 to the right. And so I would have 1 times 10 to the minus 2. Because the decimal is now here, I have to put it back where it was, and the minus 2 moves it over. Now that is the H plus concentration, because... Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. <laughs> so if I want to get the pH now, I simply do the minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration, which we know is 10 to the minus 2. So I change the sign, just like we did on the other side. And this now becomes a pH equal to 2. And that one was pretty easy. Now, as we go on, we, we simply do the same thing with the sodium hydroxide, except we've got to be careful here because this guy is looking at uh, a 10 to the minus 3. So this is 1 times 10 to the minus 3 is the molarity written in scientific notation. And from there, because this guy has a 1, we can simply take that minus 3, and that becomes the hydroxide ion concentration. And that is going to be equal to a, um, a 10 to the minus 3. But we're going to convert that to the pOH. So the pOH is just this exponent with the sign change. And that will be equal to 3. But all of these questions is asking, all of these questions are asking you to find the pH. So we've got to change this guy to pH, and for that, we simply subtract the 3 from 14. And so the pH now is going to be equal to 11. Now, this guy is a little tricky, and the reason it's tricky is because calcium hydroxide is a strong base. It's a metal with hydroxide ions. That's the definition of a strong base. And, of course, calcium is our metal. First of all, we've got to get to scientific notation like we did before. And we have 5.0 times 10 to the minus 2. But that is not the hydroxide ion concentration. 
That is the concentration of calcium hydroxide, which ionizes 100%. And every calcium hydroxide gives us two hydroxide ions because of that subscript on the hydroxide. So now we're going to have to multiply this by two. And the reason we have to multiply it by two is because if this ionizes 100%, I'll have twice as many hydroxide ions as I had calcium hydroxide molecules. So now we have this guy at 5 times 2 is 10 times 10 to the minus 2. And now I've got to move that back to scientific notation, moving my decimal here. So you've got to keep your, your head, head on straight to be able to make this work. Now I've got to get this decimal back over here and to do that, I'm moving the opposite way as the exponent of 10. And that means I'm going to have to reduce my 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the minus 1. Okay? That makes the concentration quite a bit larger of the hydroxide ions. So now, taking this to figure my pOH, <coughs> the pOH is going to be that exponent because even though this guy started out with 5, we wound up with a number of 1 when we multiplied it by, 10, by 2. Okay? So this guy is going to be 1. Subtracting 1 from 14 gives me the answer that I'm looking for, which is the pH, and that's going to be 13 for my answer there. A little tricky, huh? Okay, watch that. Watch this over and over again until it makes sense to you. I'm trying to find one. Ah, here we go. Here's a guy that dissociates only 5%. Now that is good information because acetic acid, the HC2H3O2, is a weak acid. As a weak acid, it does not ionize 100%. So the concentration of hydrogen, which is going to break off from the acetic acid, is going to be a problem. Okay, so as we move on, we've got to remember that we've got just this one hydrogen. These hydrogens aren't going to ionize, okay? So, we're assuming now that we have only 5% of what does ionize, and so our first job again is to get this into scientific notation. Well, this guy in scientific notation would be the same thing, times 10 to the 0, okay? 10 to the 0 is 1, but I've got it in scientific notation. So, let the bell finish here. Let's move on and see how we continue with this guy. This is not... If you guys make... So, as I look at this, I'm going to have to um, look at this 5%. What is 5% in decimal form? It's 0 0.05, or 0 0.5, I'm no, 0 0.05. Yeah, I've got it right. Okay, so I'm going to have to multiply this guy by the 0 0.05. Okay, so this is 0 0.1 times 10 to the 0. Okay, when I multiply the 2, by 0 0.05. So that makes 0 0.10 and the 0 0.10, I should have that there, is going to have to change to scientific notation. Oh, well, we've got to get it back to scientific notation now. So now we're going to have to make this 1.0 times 10. Now, what power of 10 is going to move this back to here? That's going to be a negative 1. Now, we actually have our hydrogen ion concentration, which results from 5% of all of these molecules ionizing and producing hydrogen ions. So here's my concentration of H+. Okay, the H plus concentration. Now that I've got the H plus concentration, I can easily tell what the pH is by taking this 1, changing its sign, and 
it becomes a pH equal to 1, which is fairly concentrated hydrogen ions. Okay? Even though that came from a weak acid. But look, it was 2 molar. 2 molar is old. That's pretty concentrated. Okay, so we can still get down into low pH ranges even with weak acids, which is an interesting thing. Now that you know this guy, this should be easy to do, and this should be easy to do, and this should be easy to do, because you're going to do the same kind of thing that I did here with number six. I hope you're able to get through this and have a better understanding of how to do these types of calculations. Okay.